welcome to Soil Cloth Wine. Uh, my name is Natalie and I'm traveling to every Appalachian on the west coast of the United States and bringing you videos uh, of chats that I have with those involved in the wine and spirits industry. Uh, I first started in the Willamette Valley where I completed the 2018 harvest as an intern and now I'm trying to learn as much as possible from vintners and beverage directors and share that with you um, so that you get to see a little bit more about what's behind the scenes and doesn't actually make it to the label, which I'm really excited to do. So the first region I traveled to after the Willamette Valley is the Puget Sound AVA in Washington. Uh, the AVA, or American Viticultural Area, is a stretch of land encompassing islands and the coastline all the way from Canada down through Washington towards Olympia, um, southwest of Seattle. So a couple days ago, I had the pleasure of visiting Bainbridge Island, uh, where Betsy's Vineyard is, and um, it's along the 48th parallel, so the same uh, latitude as many uh, regions in northern France, such as the Loire Valley, and often the uh, climate has been compared to them, though some of the major differences are, obviously I'm taking a ferry maybe 15, 20 minutes across from Seattle. Uh, on my way there, I experienced some medium to high wind and um, definitely there was a lot more uh, of a cooler climate around the shore. But what I should mention about Betsy's Vineyard is it's situated inland in a, um, a protected area. So the winds are not a huge factor um, and she also doesn't get that salty sea breeze that would be likely to affect maybe the salinity of some of the taste that coming across in the wine. Um, one of the cool things is, is that when you take the ferry there, it, depending on the season, you get to see orc pots. So that's just a recommendation. Um, but that's kind of what the climate looks like there. And then of course you have these uh, pine forests and things that are growing on the island. It's a very interesting uh, rapid changes in altitude I noticed as well. This region is really exciting to visit because ecologically it is extremely diverse and beautiful. Um, and one of the things that I find striking about this as someone who is a forager, someone that likes to look at plants all of the time, is that when you go on a hike in this particular region, you're going to see a variety of endemic berries growing in mass quantity, abundantly, and ubiquitously across the area. And so I find it unusual that often um, this area has been overlooked, or even some people have gone so far to claim that you can't grow grapes here, uh, which is obviously not the case, as you'll see. So, curious as to why you haven't heard more about the Puget Sound AVA? Me too. So, I went off to talk to Betsy. I have made it to the gorgeous island in Bainbridge, and in the next hour I'm going to be talking with Betsy, the vintner over at Bainbridge Vineyards, where they grow all estate fruit and make their wines from it. Super excited to talk island terroir and stuff. I'm currently on Bainbridge Island, uh, which some of you guys have been able to follow. This is a small island in the Puget Sound AVA of Washington. It's a maritime climate. Uh, we're currently standing in one of your vineyards, and I'm speaking with the vintner here, Betsy Winnick. All right. And uh, can you tell me what current, what's the vineyard that we're standing in? We are standing with a planting of Zweigelt mm -hmm. or Zweigelt Reba from Austria. And also there's some Dunkelfelder, which is from Germany. And one of the things that I really wanted to talk with you about was there are two main challenges to uh, being in the Puget Sound AVA. And one of them is viticulturally based. Mm -hmm. So practices that are going on within your vineyard. And one of them is also from a marketing standpoint and a recognition standpoint. And I was wondering if you could talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges that you see here um, within the Puget Sound AVA and how you uh, deal with this. Okay, great. So I'll start with viticulture. So a lot of people feel that it's too wet in Western Washington to grow grapes, so people always question whether you can actually do it, because by and large most of um, grape growing in Washington is done in Eastern Washington, which is more of a desert, an irrigated desert, with summer temperatures more similar to many of the regions of California. Um, so, but even though people feel like it rains here a lot, and we don't want the world to think it does because we don't want them all moving here to this great climate, <laughs> but the reality is, is we're actually pretty dry during the growing season, which is from April through October. Um, and we get most of our rainfall in the winter time. So, in fact, we are drier during the growing seasons than most of the classical regions of France and Germany. So if it's too wet here to grow grapes, it's definitely too wet there. And because we're dry in the summer, we have less problems with disease 
than they do in those areas. So we're actually, it's actually fairly easy to grow grapes here if you pick the right variety and do the right training system. And I think you said that this particular season was very dry. Yeah, Ma'am? well, this was relatively dry. We tend to have dry um, growing seasons in general. Um, but we do get enough rainfall in the winter that there's enough soil moisture that we normally will not have to irrigate with the exception of an extremely dry year or very young plantings because they don't have the roots down yet. So again, the secret is growing the right varieties, doing the right training systems. We can't do the big heavy reds here. We tend to specialize in whites and in Pinot Noir that's from a cooler region of France. So those, and we have some new plantings of some other reds from Northern Europe that we were working with. With your um, Pinot Noir, you said that you were picking a certain variety, and I was wondering what your rootstock was. <laughs> we have some um, on both their own roots, that we, the original planting is uh -huh. all on uh, self-rooted, and then I am working with testing out some different uh, rootstock varieties right now and with different Dijon clones. So. Is that you independently testing that, or is that a lot of affiliation with Washington? Um, no, I'm independently testing. I've done cool. some research on uh, different clones that people have tried down in Oregon. I, again, I get probably a lot of my information from Oregon because there's such a big um, plantings of Pinot, Pinot Noir, and there's a lot of research that's been done in Western Oregon for grape growing. In Washington State, because most of the industry is focused in Eastern Washington, we don't have as much research that helps us with growing grapes this side of the Cascades. So the regions that she's speaking about are these like Yakima, Columbia Valley that tend to um, get a lot of the attention um, because they're producing a lot of big reds that are very popular on the market and the fact that there's just so many wineries popping up. I think one statistic I saw was that there's one new winery popping up there um, or a new vineyard popping up almost one every two weeks, uh, which is really incredible. And um, in terms of that, if we're thinking from a like marketing perspective, mm -hmm. how do you guys uh, deal with that particular Okay, challenge? so we're one of the oldest wineries in Washington State. There's now like over 900 wineries, and we're the 84th winery that was formed. That's our bonded winery number. So we've been around a long time. And way back when, I'll tell you a little bit of history, um, Washington kind of has an anomaly compared to so many regions in the world, and that when the industry was really starting to take off in the 60s and 70s, they were using a lot of the uh, varieties and techniques from California, because that's where a lot of you know information was coming from, and certainly plant materials. So it was a logical choice to choose Eastern Washington for most of those plantings. But the population base was on this side of the state. So the wineries would be on this side of the state. And to justify why there were no vineyards associated with wineries, the majority of wineries in Western Washington, some of these big wineries said it wasn't possible to grow grapes here. And so we were often in a little bit of a battle because we were actually doing it here for over 40 years. So um, we have worked to try to encourage other people to grow grapes in Western Washington. And again, Washington for that time was so different than everywhere else in the world. So we wanted to see more uh, wineries on this side of the state starting to grow grapes. So we actually trained some of the people who now have vineyards in Western Washington. We used to give classes. Um, we formed an organization towards the Puget Sound wine growers to try to have uh, to share information on technical stuff on how to do it. Uh, again, because we weren't getting as much help from Washington State University because the industry was on the other side of the state. And then um, more recently, we've been getting a lot of uh, help from the Washington Wine Commission because again they were sort of used to seeing everything coming from the other side of the state and when I spoke to them I said why don't we capitalize on the fact that we have so much diversity in the state yes. we have so many different types of Appalachians in different areas and I feel like Washington can offer a lot of choices to people as far as the styles of wine that are produced in the state, probably better than almost any other state because of the diversity. I think Puget Sound adds quite a bit to that. Um, the interesting thing about the Puget Sound um, viticultural area, though, is that most of the wines that are produced, and by that I mean fermented here in the Puget Sound region or in the, in the confines of the AVA, are actually wines that were grown in eastern Washington mm -hmm. because there are still a majority of the wineries in this area go over there and purchase fruit and bring it here to ferment. Um, our niche is that we grow all of it here, so all of our wines are truly from the Puget Sound AVA.
Mm -hmm. One of the places I spoke to yesterday would be, uh, they made some wines um, from estate grapes, so things they were growing there, and a lot of it they were bringing in mm -hmm. from places in Yakima, and uh, they would bring in the whole clusters, and they would have uh, timing really w well worked out so that they could have a truck out there to pick it up in the mornings right after it's gotten picked, maintaining that coldness that you need when you're going to be pressing grapes, and then bringing it all the way out here, and th that's how they were making a lot of their... Um, Red. So I think that it's great that you guys have all of these different varieties that are obviously doing very well here. Um, one thing that I would love the viewers to know is to restate the fact that some of these vines you're looking at are up to 40 years old that you have out here. Mm -hmm. Not um, in this field, but on but the other side of the But in farm. the other one, they have some really thick rootstocks that you can go and see. Uh, some of the characteristics I noticed from this region was that they tended to have a little bit younger wines, things that were coming out of their estates. Um, but here, you're going to be able to access all of that full body and the richness that you're going to get from a more mature variety. Um, and there's also the factor of your guys' climate, which is so unique here. You have uh, two hours of daylight uh, longer than Napa does, and you also have a what would be a longer growing season and I was wondering um, what other factors uh, are particular to this terroir that you think impart some interesting sensory quality? Well I think the temperatures being on the cooler side um, that you don't while we don't get the high alcohols that you would get which is kind of makes the wine in many ways more food friendly because mm -hmm. we don't have we aren't pushing 15% alcohol, which you can easily get in some of the hotter regions. Um, but the cool climate here tends to accentuate the delicate floral aromas of wine. A lot of people often associate that with sweeter wines, but I would tend to say that there's an awful lot of wine produced in the world, particularly the cooler climates of Europe too, that have a lot of delicate fragrances and perfumes and are dry just the way we're trying to make a lot of our wine dry. And I don't want some of the viewers to, when they first hear that there is going to be something that is probably a little bit low, uh, lower alcohol, to not equate it with um, easily jumping from that to a sugar level and trying to think about perhaps things are not getting as ripe out here. There's a lot of practices that you guys are doing in order to guarantee mica the ripeness. Right. Well, first of all, I do the varieties I choose. Exactly. Um, I'm not picking varieties that need require a longer season or higher temperatures. So we're picking our grapes usually from about mid-September to the mid-October. On a cooler year, we'll pick them at the end, uh, some of the later varieties at the end of October. So I specifically, we specifically choose varieties that are from parts of Europe that have similar climate to what we have here. So we're not trying to do all of the southern European ones, we, which we wouldn't, they wouldn't ripen here. So I'm not going to put a lot of effort in growing grapes if I can't get a ripe uh, fruit that I can then uh, make a wine that I'm proud of. And then one of people's favorite things to do is equate a region with a varietal. If, I know I don't, this is a lot of pressure, Okay. going forward, um, if you had to pick from one of your varietals, maybe from all of your varietals, uh, maybe two that you would want your region to be equated with based on what you think really works well with the land. What would those two be? Okay, so if we look at historically what's been done here in the Puget Sound area, that almost in all the areas, I mean, we're probably mid-range. There's some areas further north up in the San Juan Islands that are a little bit cooler than us. But if you look at all of us in the Puget Sound region, by and large, almost everybody grows Madeleine Angevin, which is a mm -hmm. variety from the Loire region of France. It does well, really well here. And so that's one you're going to get every single year. Even if you have a cooler year, a more challenging year, you'll be able to write them that. So I'd say that, that, and that has the history. It's been grown in here, around here for over 40 years. Um, I feel climate is changing now. So we're seeing some other things that are, the climate sort of moving. So grape growing can move north. Um, we've been growing Pinot Noir now since nine. The, uh, 1988 was when we planted that and we've had a vintage since, since 92 every year except for two years. So, um, I'd say about 20% of the time I'll make it into a dry rosé but the rest of the time I can make it into a red wine and I think we're going to see things even warming up even more as yes. we go forward. That's true. And mm -hmm. then I don't want to keep you too much longer because I know you have to go um, but in terms of your comparison of Madeleine Angevin coming out of the Loire Valley and then what's coming out of your vineyards and this particular region, what would you say they're some of the characteristics that you're tasting? Especially my fascination is with uh, the soil, mm -hmm. glacial till here, mm -hmm. Loire Valley, mm -hmm. I don't remember. What do you think? So I feel like what we can get here, um, and again, it's sort of a minor variety over there, so you're not going to see a lot of uh, single varietal 
um, Madeleine Angevin's over there. But here I pick up, I like to describe it sort of like a Sauvignon Blanc, but with a more floral versus a grassiness to it. So we get a lot of those um, more delicate perfumes in it. Then. And for us, it's a great seafood wine. It ties in really well with local oysters and um, other kinds of seafood that you can harvest here. All right, thank you. I appreciate you talking yeah. with me. It was great Thanks to so discuss much. that. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Good luck with the day. rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs> Oh great, that was what I really wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I, I knew that we had some other stuff there because it's it's so you know, Puget Sound is like a different region, so